Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about Microsoft Defender Application Control. Previously introduced as Windows Defender Application Control, Microsoft Defender Application Control is now even more accessible to organizations because they've removed the requirement to use enterprise or education. So now organizations using Windows 10 and 11 Professional are able to leverage the features to gain greater insight and control into their Windows devices. MDAC builds upon the foundations set in AppLocker which was introduced originally in Windows 7 to allow organizations to control exactly which applications can run in their, on their Windows devices within their estate. But AppLocker kind of, whilst AppLocker helps control application usage and prevent users from running non-approved applications in an estate, it's not as feature rich or security focused as Microsoft Defender Application Control. Whilst Microsoft Defender Application Control should be chosen over AppLocker, it's also possible to configure both to be working in parallel. And that might be useful for organizations that have specific requirements around legacy operating systems or those who need control over specific devices. There's loads to talk about with Microsoft Defender Application Control, but I need to split it into a few different parts. Firstly, what I'm going to do is show you how it works if you just configure one of the methods of deploying Microsoft Defender Application Control, and that is through the Intune Endpoint Manager approach. If we use um, Endpoint Security uh, Profile, for example, we can specify a few settings that might allow us to enable it. It might not be perfect for everyone, so we're going to go through that in a bit more detail. Let's jump over. So we've got a Windows device here. It is enrolled in MDM. I'll just quickly show you the uh, how we know that. So Access Work or School is set to Lucy and you can see it's enrolled in MDM. We've got a few applications pushed down here, but there's no policies around uh, application control. So if we jump over to my other screen and take a look at where we would set this, we would go to Endpoint Security, Attack Surface Reduction, Create Policy, and choose the type of device. So it's Windows 10 or later, and we're going to choose application control. Just choose create, and then give it a name. And you can see we've got a few settings here. We've got um, a drop down box here, and this will lead into the examples that I can show you. So the first one is not configured, and if you leave it as not configured, nothing will happen. So it won't enable app locker application control in this case it will just leave it as it was whatever whatever way it's set in any other policy that you've got if we choose enforce components and store apps what that's going to do is allow windows components third-party driver kernel applications and uh, any microsoft store app so any application that is available in the microsoft store not necessarily a microsoft app but a store app so any any published application from there and what it's going to do is enforce. So if the user runs an application or tries to run an application that is not covered by this policy, so it isn't a Windows component and it isn't a store app, it will enforce the prevention of running that app. And uh, and it'll put an event log in, in the event log to say it was blocked, but the user won't be able to do the thing they were trying to do, which could be great or it could be bad. The next option we've got is audit. And that will do exactly the same, except it won't actually block the user from doing what they were doing, but it will put a log in the event log to say this application was blocked. Next, we've got Enforce Components, Store Apps, and Smart Locker. There's not an awful lot of information about what Smart Locker is, but it's actually linked to something called the Intelligent Security Graph, where Microsoft have a reputation-based analysis of applications and a load of other stuff but this is specific to do with specifically to do with applications and essentially they can tell if an application is good or bad or not what it then does is block the application if it's not good reputation let's take a look so it says enforce so if we choose enforce that what that will what that will do is prevent the application from running if it's not a windows component not a store app and not uh, a good reputation application. If we choose audit, what that's going to do is put a message in the log file but still allow the user to run the application. So what I'm going to do here is choose audit 
And what that's going to do is it's going to pre to tell me that it was going to prevent the application from running, but still run it. So we get to experience the log uh, approach. And what that will do is give us a chance to test our um, policy before it actually has any effect on end users. This is the recommended approach for new rollouts of this kind of profile. So we'll choose that and we'll just choose next and next. I'm going to assign it to all devices because in my environment all of my devices are my test devices so I'll choose next and then create. So that's gone away and started to create so we'll come back in a few moments when this has had an effect on my test device. Okay, so just before we go over to test this, I've just realized uh, a slight issue. I'm not going to be able to find an application that has a bad reputation. Certainly, I can't um, I can't think of any applications that have a bad reputation that I want to download. So what I'm going to do is change this to uh, not Smart Locker and just change it to Components and Store Apps. Still audit, so we don't see it actually block, but... What we will see is that it blocks any application that it would it would tell us about blocking any application that is not a store app or a Windows component. So we'll click review and save and save, and wait for that policy to apply. Okay, so it's just said it's going to sign me out. So what I'll do now is just choose close and then restart. It seems it needs to do some rebooting when it applies this policy. So we'll wait for that to happen. Okay, I reckon that's probably done. So just go into your event log and take a look at uh, what it's saying around 12.40-ish on my clock. And we find the event log for the audit of applications and that kind of thing in the applications and servicing log under Microsoft, Windows, and then Code Integrity. And then there's an operations log here. Let's just take a look. So it says it has, um, see what it did, switch from L2 to L3 mode, and it's refreshed for one policy. Okay, great, so it looks like we're ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is now just test running any application. I think I've got a few installed. I've got 7-zip installed. Let's see what happens when I try to run that. Okay, so it's run. We didn't tell the policy to block it, so let's see what happens. Got a new event up here, choose refresh, and uh, probably around this one. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Code integrity determined that a process attempted to load this file here, which did not meet the standing requirements or, valid or violated a code integrity policy. However, due to the code integrity auditing policy, the image was allowed to load. So that says it would have prevented it, but it allowed it to load because it's in audit mode. So I've just logged in as me, and I'm going to, me being the admin in this environment, uh, I'm just going to jump over to Lucy's profile and grab that VLC file that I downloaded a few minutes ago and install it and see what. Um, see what happens. Okay great that's installed and jump out of my profile and log in as Lucy my tester and see what happens when she tries to run it. Okay so we know from the policy that we've set that Lucy will not be prevented from running it so there's no point in just looking to see if it's blocked. What we want to do is see in the event log whether there is an audit event that pops up when she tries to run it. Okay so no more logs have appeared just now. We'll just choose VLC Media Player. What we'll see is that it will run. There you go. All good. Let's see what actually happened in the event log. It's this little exclamation mark appeared which shows that it's got a new log to show us. Um, and it said in the information log it said uh, it determined that process try to run it violated a policy but due to the auditing policy it was allowed to load exactly okay so that's the second test so it, it really is um, enabled and doing the the kind of things we expect it to do which is block applications I'm going to switch it around to allow um, reputable applications through smart locker and test that 
go back into this policy here and choose uh, let's enforce smart locker and choose re and save and save so what this will do is it will um, block an application if it's not reputable but it should allow reputable applications hopefully like S, uh, VLC and 7-zip to run for normal users. Let's take a look. So we'll be able to tell when this policy has applied because it'll ask for a reboot. So we'll just go back into the MDM and kick this off a little bit sooner because we don't want to wait too long for this to apply. So I'll just scroll down to here and choose sync and in a few seconds what you'll see is that it uh, asks for a reboot and then we'll jump back in as Lucy and see what's different. There we go, it says it's going to reboot in 10 minutes. Choose close on that and just give it a reboot now rather than waiting 10 minutes for the auto reboot. Jump straight back into here as Lucy. And then once again, we're going to just do a jump over to the event log so that we can see these events happen as we go. Okay, we'll just wait for this to calm down. Um, it's doing some testing by the looks of it. It's got the, these error messages that seem to have stopped now. There's no exclamation mark there, so that's that's good. But about a minute ago, it was doing some testing. So hopefully that means it's it's finished. Oh, another one's popped up. I'm gonna need to let that calm down a little bit before we can test this. Uh, okay, I think that might be done. So what we're going to do now is just run VLC and see whether that is allowed to run. Your organization used Windows Defender Application Control to block this app. Interesting. So it doesn't have a good reputation. Let's take a look at 7-zip. See what happens when you try to run that. Your org blocked 7-zip as well. Wow. Okay, let's take a look in the event log. And uh, let's take a look at what that says. It uh, didn't meet the enterprise signing requirements or violated a code integrity policy. So it was blocked, I guess. Um, I wonder. And there we go. So what we've done here is successfully blocked an application from running if it uh, isn't a Microsoft app, a Windows Store component, or Windows Core component, sorry, or a reputable application. Now, what a reputable application is, I'm not sure yet. We're going to need to take a look at that. But in the next video, what we're going to take a look at is uh, a different way of configuring this. So at the moment, we've configured it by uh, using the endpoint security section. There's also an endpoint protection policy you can create, which will configure the same thing, but very slightly differently. So we'll go through that. And also, we've got an Intune custom profile that I want to use. And eventually, maybe in a, in a future video after that, config manager profiles to deploy this, uh, this solution. For now, please hit the like button. I'll see you next time.